Hello, Internet! Welcome once again to the Free to Play Cast brought to you by MMOBomb.com, your home for all things free to play related. I'm Mike Byrne, aka Magic Man, your host. This is episode 182. We're recording on May 25th, 2016. You're watching on the 26th or later. We've got previews, we've got reviews, we've got... Hey, this is eight years old, and does anybody play it anymore? Let's take a look. We have also got a dog. <laughs> I just heard that damn dog. But also on the line, more importantly, Mr. Zach Sharps from Free to Play Weekly. How are you, Big Daddy? I'm doing all right. Uh, my A-bomb, kind of, uh, which I'll talk about later, kind of irritated me last night. But it, it's it's okay. It's okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And the knight in the background does not look pleased. He doesn't. He's always angry. Also on the line, still in the fun zone of setting up the new place, Quintlin Bowers. What's up, Q? Hey. Yeah, and don't, <laughs> so and don't right move now. too much because you pixelate right now. Still in the process of getting everything up and running. How is the new place now that you've been there for a couple of weeks? Um, it's it's getting better. Um, I'd actually just been doing a, a lot of doctor's appointments with Barney, so hey, lots, hey. lots of appointments. See, there's that pixelation. We love it. <laughs> I'm not moving that Don't much. move! Don't move! All I'm right, let's slide over and get started with the news. <laughs> All right, so first up this week, uh, we've we've talked about it before, but there was stuff that was under NDA, and we, we couldn't really talk too much about it. I had some hands-on with this title in, in closed beta 2. Uh, I can't really talk about what I experienced in closed beta 2, because the closed beta 3 is when the actual NDA falls. However, the important parts of what I played in closed beta 2. I was able to do a press preview last week and that embargo fell this morning. So check out the full article on what we're talking about here. But this is Riders of Icarus, uh, published by Nexon, coming to the West. It's already been available in other areas of the world, but coming to the West, closed beta 3 is set to start at the beginning of June and then uh, head start slash launch, depending on if you bought a founder's pack or not, will start uh, with the head start at the end of June, the actual launch of the game in early July. Now, first off, let me ask you guys this before we get started too far into this topic. We've just kind of said, oh, it has mounted flying combat. Okay, great. We'll see how well it's done. Have, have either of you been in the closed beta tests? Q? No. Zach? No. Okay. Now, Zach, you tend to do a lot of stuff with overseas titles because you've got friends that have Korean social security numbers that you have access to and things like that. Have you played it overseas at all? No, I, I have not, even okay. though I, I am interested in it. Okay, so well, let me give you my scoop on it, and then you guys can tell me what you're thinking about it. And, and I'm pretty much going to take this almost directly from my preview, <laughs> the my preview article, which if you want to read, head on over to MMOBomb.com. It's right in the, the carousel on the, the main page header there. So, yeah, it's run of the mill. It's a tab target MMO with hotbars and questing and a generic storyline, at least so far. I mean, I'm only, I think uh, the characters we used in the preview were level 20 and 25. Without dis disclosing too much, that's about where I got to in beta tests uh, anyway. So the storyline's pretty generic. The, the game looks uh, looks nice. I mean, it's not top tier by any stretch of the imagination. I think both of you just watching videos on the game can tell that. There's this... The, the one thing I really don't like visually about Riders of Icarus is, like, there's this haze. It, it's everything's subdued there's like this haze over the screen and i don't like that i also don't like that the game does support once again here we go zach it does support high 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 resolutions you know your 2160s your 4k resolutions your just under 4k <laughs> resolutions but does not have a ui scaling function at all there's not even a, like, some games give you a small, medium, and large option. There's none in the game now, and I hope that changes because I hate having to go into actual files and, and manually adjust that stuff. I, I just hate it. I'm corrupting the data, and chances are I'm going to screw something up at some point. 
so put a UI slider in there. For God's sakes, put a UI slider in there. In this age of 4K monitors, put a goddamn UI slider on, on the games for me. Please, 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 please. Now, that being said, I realize I probably haven't sold you guys on the game. <laughs> this was not a ringing endorsement. It was average, right? Well, I mean, when it really comes to Riders of Icarus, what did we really expect? I mean, we saw the mounts and the, the fact that you're able to tame a lot of different creatures and whatnot. That seems interesting, and I actually am fully interested in the game because of that reason, and plus the action mode that they release is appealing to me because I would rather use that while questing than do tap targeting. Now, of course, in PvP situations, you're going to use the tap targeting. It's I talked about the same thing in my Bless Online first impressions, is that whenever you need precise sort of aiming, um, you're not going in a massive, like a huge massive crowd, want to hunt for a healer to target it with a soft targeting system. You're just never going to lock onto that healer. So you would use a more precise tab targeting uh, method. So uh, the game itself, it looks interesting. It does look run of the mill. Um, the haze was something that I noticed too. It kind of reminded me of Terra's art style which I fixed by turning down the post-processing one notch, and it completely fixed that for me, but I'm not sure about Riders of Icarus because I haven't played it. As far as the UI scaling goes, there's no excuse, and honestly, one thing I will tell every developer out watching this, if you don't put a UI slider in your game, I'm less inclined to give you money because it just shows how lazy you are. And there's literally no excuse in 2016. Too many high-resolution monitors out there for you not to do it, Fully customizable UI is literally the modern day era of MMOs and what they do in terms of catering towards everyone's play style. And it's just, it's, it's just, yeah, it's lazy not to do that. So definitely make sure they add that. But I'm very still interested to check out the game because I like the whole taming. Yeah, aspect. you and I are on the same page. You're maybe a little more brutal about it. Uh, here, here's the thing that that really confused me though. The UI is very very customizable as far as putting things where you want and things like that now again but it you, lacks the slider you you writers of icarus people uh that have played overseas and had more time than the two days that i had access to it and i really wanted to play the game rather than mess around with the settings in that ui interface you may be able to manually adjust the sizes of individual things and if you can writers of icarus fans let us know in the comments below so that uh, anybody isn't taking my gripe on two days of gameplay as absolute gospel there. I'm willing to concede that I may have missed the ability to manually size every single piece in the UI interface. I thought it ironic that there was no global UI scaler. That's so uh, small gripe. I'm willing to put it aside for now and see what happens with it. And maybe somebody on YouTube can point me in the right direction. Here's the deal with Riders of Icarus Q, and I can see you and I spending a long time in this game. Q and I have probably spent more of our adult lives than we're willing to admit farming rifts for mounts and pets in Rift. Because we like to just gather up the horses and the companions, and Riders of Icarus really really caters to that q yeah I'm, I'm a sucker for 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 mounts and pets anyway so but yeah we did what was it like that 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 bug mount or whatever it was, it was the hell bug the hell bug yes yeah there was like six of us and we farmed those riffs over and over and over again for weeks until everybody had the mount the companion all of them <laughs> yeah so here's the deal with riders of icarus much, much more interactive on this front. It's all about, like Zach said, capturing and taming creatures in the world. So just mousing over a creature in the world will give you its little tooltip box and it'll tell you if it's tameable or not. And most of the creatures in the world, whether they're flying or ground-based, are tameable. There's a few exceptions here and there, big bosses, stuff like that. But hundreds of these things can be tamed. How do you tame them? Well, you click your little taming ability and you sneak up on the bastards, right? And you jump right on their back and then you play a little WASD mini game to either successfully tame them or not tame them while they're trying to buck you off. The little clincher here, you do have to have taming points available 
uh, and various different types of monsters will cost various uh, amounts of taming points. This is kind of their, it's their refreshing daily currency. It's the one that's going to keep Zack from <laughs> farming all of the monsters in three days and then being done. Uh, so I could definitely see a cash shop item at some point to refill taming points rather than waiting for your daily reset. Um, most things were costing like four or five. Some of the more elite ones in the zones that I saw during the preview were 12 to 15, and you, you got like 100 uh, per day. So, yeah, maybe they'll play with those numbers a little bit. But uh, So that's the only little caveat that I really didn't like. If this is the main draw of the game, please don't limit how much I can do it in a certain day. But I kind of get it if it, you know, whatever. Other monsters, though, may require something special, Q. You might need a special item. You may need a special tactic. For instance, I, uh, during the press preview, was with one or two of our press cohorts from other sites, and we scoped out an elite bear, and sneaking up behind him didn't work. If you snuck up behind him, you got aggroed and you had to fight him. But instead, climbing up a mountainside, jumping off of it while he patrols below you, and smashing your spacebar just before you hit him allows you to jump onto his back from high above and start the whole taming process. It works the same way for flying mounts, too. Zach, you're going to have to fly up above somebody, drop down at the correct moment, dismount and drop, and hope to God you hit it right, or it's a long way down to the ground. That's uh, badass. It's very, very cool. And some some tamings might require that you go get a special item from a quest or a dungeon first, that you have to have that item to like subdue them and then try and tame them. So it's not just play the same minigame thousands and thousands and thousands of times. There are variants to this, and there are ranges of difficulties uh, on these creatures. Heroic, uh, hero, elite, legendary, all requiring different tactics. Very, and there's Domino, who has been tamed by Q. <laughs> she's, she's got Domino. He's tamed. Here's where it gets even more, uh, oh, God, I'm going to be doing this for months, Zach. <sighs> Once you catch them, you can use them as a mount, sure. But you can also convert them into a companion instead. You lose the ability to use them as a mount, but now you have them as a companion that will fight along your side. Or... You could convert them into seals, which is basically Rider of Icarus's uh, gemming system on its gear. So certain monsters might give you plus physical, plus magical attributes if you turn them into a seal and then you socket it on your gear. But if you do that, then you lost the mount, and you're going to want the mount, so you got to go and tame that bitch again so that you have the mount version, the companion version, and the seal version. By the way, when you have them as a mount or a companion, they actually level up, and leveling them up before you make them a seal can make those stat increases to your gear even bigger. So you're going to be catching shit, leveling shit up, and taming shit over and over and over and over again, and I know that sounds like a terrible grind, but I cannot wait for closed beta test 3 to start. I've been jonesing to go and try this game some more, Zach. Am I nuts? No, you're <laughs> not. I mean, it sounds like to me more of like an adult Pokemon game in a sense, right? Where you go around, you tame things, you improve them, you turn them into things, and then you tame them again in order to improve your character. And that's, that, to me, as a progression system, is unique and also interesting. And it sounds like they fleshed it out quite a bit. I was worried it was just, oh, tame this, and then you can maybe fly your dragon mount that you just captured around and do some aerial combat with it, and that's about it. But it sounds, to me, a lot more in-depth, which is really, really cool. Uh, and it's something that I really hope that they don't ruin with the cash shop. Something that could easily be ruined with the cash shop. And I think that's where this game is going to be a make or break for me, is what that cash shop has in it when launch occurs. Now, as far as like the UI sliding, going back to that, it's usually something that's fixed before launch. So I don't want that to sort of be like, oh, well, that better be in the game right now. It's something that's usually <laughs> added later on. Um, and I'm not really too concerned about that. But it, it really comes down to the fact that uh, with pets and mounts and collectibles like that, I usually, especially if a game has an emphasis on it, I like it a lot. It, it's something that if it's a main focus of the gameplay, which in Riders of Icarus, it definitely looks like it is, it's something that I will, I will really want to do. 
um, in Black Desert, just to contrast, um, it's a game I've been playing and still play. Um, horse taming is not really a huge emphasis. It's something that you can do and, you know, level up your mounts and get new skills for it and tame them and do all that stuff. But you can also just buy them outright. And it's, for me, a lot easier just to go out, do something else, get a, make a lot of money, and then just buy out that mount outright without spending that time. But with Riders of Icarus, it seems like it's more friendly um, towards people like myself who maybe don't have the time to or don't want to leave their computers on to level up their horse or whatnot to get that to be improved and whatnot. It's more just by playing the game as you normally would, and that to me sounds very appealing. Q, it's, it's also got aspects of collection in that you have a little journal and if you collect all five of these different creatures in this particular zone, you get another creature. So kind of like, you know, Rift's uh, shinies collect the whole set and get these things. I mean, it just really hits the mark for, for me. And I haven't felt this way about a free-to-play game in a while where I jump into a closed beta, I play it, and then a few days after the closed beta ends, I find myself going, Oh shit! That close beta is over. If that if that close beta was still running, I would totally play that again tonight. And it was a, it was a nice feeling. Uh, and, and yeah, dungeons and raids and five classes and all that stuff. The mounted combat, uh, it felt finicky and a little bit sluggish with the tab targeting, particularly in the preview when we got to take a, a shot at the first one of the first raid bosses, ten person raid bosses, and it was a flying encounter with a huge, you know, giant in the middle of a pool. Uh, however, with them now saying, hey, in closed beta test three, we're going to add the action combat element, I'm hopeful that that makes the flight combat a bit better. Q, what are you thinking? I, I, are we going to play this one? Am I nuts? You, you, do you think I'm just off my rocker here? Are you even remotely interested in this, looking at certain things? What's going on on your side? Uh, I, I actually think I am interested in this. And again, it's, it is because of the collectible thing. I, I Like you said, the Rift Shinies. How many times did I make the group stop? So oh, God. The <laughs> or the, the, the journal things in XIV. Like, I yeah. always do journals and stuff like that. So... It's it's the small things like that that usually keep me the most interested over, you know, stuff like raids or, you know, things like that. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely <laughs> try. It's, uh, yeah, I'm really intrigued by it. And, and, and I don't, it's not like it's anything grand, but it's like, I could have some fun doing that. I hope they don't screw it up with the damn cash shop now, Nexon, because I'm interested in your product. Uh, I'm definitely interested in it. You got me. You got me hooked. Now just keep me hooked, because uh, Blade and Soul didn't do it the way I thought it was going to. <laughs> that game is such a gear treadmill. Oh my god. Yeah, just a bit. I love how <laughs> Q's picture is frozen and pixelated. She's. Let's do the Q pose. <laughs> Zach did not participate in the Q pose. <laughs> All right, moving on. Another company Q and I are quite fond of. Let's talk about Funcom. Age of Conan uh, turned eight years old, and I actually didn't realize that it was that old. Uh, and that kind of made me want to talk about Funcom as a whole. But first, let's talk about Age of Conan briefly. I shut the game off after I left the first starting zone and pretty much never looked back. It's one of those games to me that if you're going to play it, you have to sub, like a SWOTOR. It's, if you're not going to pay the sub, then, then kind of don't bother. And even years after the fact, reps from Funcom came out and said, mm, yeah, we probably should have gone buy to play or something other than free to play uh, on Age of Conan. So, uh, but hey, it's turning eight. There's a bunch of stuff discounted in the shops. Zach, were you ever into uh, Unchained there? I, I was, but it was a product of being out before its time from a technical standpoint. I mean, it was buggy at launch. There was not a lot oh, of people yeah. that had computers that could run the damn thing, even though it was absolutely gorgeous for the time. Uh, it was a game that I bought at launch, hoping I would be able to play it, because on the lowest settings possible, the game looks worse than World of Warcraft or Burning Crusade um, World of Warcraft. And so I was like, okay, well, I should be able to run it then, right? No. I wasn't able to run it, like, hardly at all. So I was going through the starter zone at, like, maybe 10, 15 frames per second, probably less than that, and it started freezing a lot. So it's like, okay, I'm going to uninstall this, even though I just spent, like, what, 50 or $60 on the dang thing. Um, and so I went back to it when it went free-to-play and had a blast with it. I maybe got to, I think, like, level 30 or something like that. 
uh, once they brought out the um, the bloodshed servers, I forget exactly if they're called bloodshed or not, but the the full on PvP servers, I had a blast in those. I thought that was a great idea. It was really something that I wish wasn't released when it was, something that I wish was more modernized and re-released today because it's a game that I feel with its combat system being as interesting as it was, the executions being as brutal and awesome as they were, and just the overall flow of the game and the fact that it had voice acting, the fact that its draw distance is unlike what most MMOs even try to accomplish, the the graphics still hold up somewhat today even. Uh, it's it's really a game that I thought was would have been a success if released maybe three to five years later um, than it was, just because from a technical standpoint, the market was not ready for it, and it was not ready for the market either with its bugs. So, Were you talking about the, the Blood and Glory? Uh, yes, PvP Blood and set? Glory, okay. yes, this, yes. I just yes. want to make sure we're talking about the same thing there. Q, on the Funcom side of things, I want to take a look at their titles because you and I uh, are also into the secret world. Um, and I don't want to talk about their other titles like the you know the Longest Journey, Dreamfall, that type of stuff, or even the, the upcoming uh, Conan Exiles. Uh, but their MMOs uh, in particular, the secret world, uh, Unchained. I guess we could mention Lego minifigures, although I'm amazed that that's still a thing. Uh, the Free One Anarchy Online. Uh, particularly the secret world it's it's a game that you and I enjoy a lot it's definitely niche definitely niche uh, however and the combat is still atrocious but setting that aside I am amazed that this still this has not gone free to play at this point like I got the whole buy to play thing when they did it and then when it came out on Steam they enjoyed another push but just going and looking at the Steam, and Funcom's not releasing individual numbers, but you can use the Steam charts and get a good idea of what's going on on the Steam side of things. Uh, over the last year, the average players per, per, month, per day per month type deal ha have been decreasing. And there's very tiny spikes when a new issue comes out, but nothing huge. I, I mean, with right now there's 330 players online on, on Steam. Is it time for the secret world to go free to play and have a whole new push of people that just aren't going to check it out because even on a Steam sale they don't want to spend money on it? Mm, I'm kind of partial to the buy to play on it, to be honest. And their their reason for doing it is they wanted to make a barrier to keep people out who are serious about the game. Right, but <laughs> at a certain point, though, you you gotta you gotta say, all right, we we need to make some money off of this thing and. They they're, are they're doing it. well. They're, I mean, but it's it's not a huge financial success. Lego minifigures hurt Funcom to the point of well, six yeah. months ago, I wrote an article on should Funcom even be saved because they were looking for dire financial help. Now, Secret World may be doing well, but when the company as a whole is in serious, serious trouble, yeah. you, you start looking at anything to save the sinking ship, don't you? But the thing about the secret world is, is if you go in and you look, when you're in there playing the secret world, almost everybody is paying a sub. Yeah. And you can tell this because there are special um, run, like uh, special sprint uh, effect that you get that you can only get if you're paying a sub. And everybody has that turned on. So everybody that's in there playing is subscribed. Right, but there's, there's only 300 of us on Steam doing it. Steam, yeah, but I mean, it, like, I don't play on Steam. Your because... Skype is awful today. <laughs> Did I go robot? Oh, you're totally robot. Go ahead, though. We can understand you. I, I, I don't play on Steam. I have the Steam account because they had a sale, but I don't log into Steam to play. I play on the regular account, uh, on my regular client. So I'm not sure what the difference is there. Versus that, but I mean, uh, you know, I went, we went, and, uh, Justin and I went and bought Steam accounts because they were on sale and it gave us more of the issues. Um, so you're you're fine with still being buy to play? Yeah, I mean, and, and we pay for the issues and stuff like that. I, but I mean, and, and I'm paying the what what twelve fifteen whatever it is in a month for some. I don't even know how much I'm paying for some. <laughs> <laughs> and I do the same thing. I sub, and I have. I'm a current on all the issues. So, and I buy the collector's versions. I mean, so they get a good chunk of money out of me. But Zach, I saw you kind of nodding that 
yep, I, I, you, you might think it's it's time to, to go free to play too and just add to that player base, or maybe I'm misreading you. It's honestly a terrible business decision for them not to go free to play at this point. For how cheap that game is when it's on sale, it makes them look absolutely silly. Well, when Guild Wars 2 did the same thing. Come on. And that's why they went free to play, at least for the vanilla version, right? And, and now we have Heart of Thorns, which is one of their other incentives. They're like, okay, let's get people in the vanilla game. Let's make them hooked on the vanilla game. And then that will entice them to buy the future content. And that's exactly what they need to do with the Secret World. Because I'm completely positive if they did that, they would boost their player base quite a lot and get more people to subscribe. Because right now, people are looking at this game that's always on sale for like $5. And like, why do I want to spend $5 on this game when it's going to go free to play? And that that's sort of the logic that I feel a lot of people probably have is why doesn't it just go free to play instead of me having to spend $5 for it maybe to go free to play in the future? when I may want to sub for additional 15 when I'm actually in the game. And I'm sure a lot of people probably would subscribe to the game. And it, they definitely need to go uh, and sort of follow the free-to-play route that Sortor did in the sense that they have a, uh, a, a system set up where you can play the game initially, get hooked on it, and then subscribe to play the game how it should be played. And Wait, that's sort of the you should follow the Sortor route? Money wise, money wise, <laughs> definitely money wise, and that's that's because the thing. I'm looking at this purely from a business perspective. <laughs> purely from a business perspective, Sortor succeeded massively financially because of how they sort of had the system where you initially play the game, you could play all the way up to the initial vanilla cap. After that, you're pretty much inclined to want to subscribe because the game is super limited if you don't. Secret World, if you play it up to um, the original point, as far as the content goes, you're going to reach content that maybe you can't play because it's locked away behind a subscription or a one-time purchase, and so you would want to subscribe. That's probably why you guys subscribe for all the bonuses and whatnot. So it's really a system, just like with Guild Wars 2 even, you play the vanilla version, you're going to eventually hit a point where you're like, okay, I want to play the rest of that content, so I'm going to buy the, the base game. And that's what I mean by the, the sort of the Sortor model of giving you a trial and then you basically go in and play the the game to, at its fullest, and they need to do that. You pay for the you pay for the additional content in the Secret World. You you buy yeah. the issues. You do those separately. That you do not get that for subscribing ever. What you're subscribing for is things like the ability to jump from one port point to another without having to pay in game currency and stuff like that, and get a f get some few extra bonuses like, um, uh, in in. The, the in-store cash so you can buy motor scooters or whatever. Hmm, that's <laughs> interesting. I guess I misspoke because I thought at one point um, they actually had those uh, basically brought into the subscription. That, to me, just makes their subscription not as worthy. I mean, I wish that they would add that in because maybe that's one of the reasons why I didn't go back and play it at one point because I did play it initially when I went by to play uh, and we sort of had that more influx of players, but the combat just sort of made me not want to really play it. Well, and that's uh, the thing too so. is the game has never been centered around the combat. The, what, what it's always been centered around is the the uh, the puzzle solving and stuff like that. That's the bulk of the game, and and that's part of the reason I think they're holding the Secret World back separately because it is not a game that is designed for normal MMO players. It's designed for people who want to spend their time. Googling. It's, what it's not designed for normal Bob. gamers. It's designed for us freaks. <laughs> yeah. what, what song was written by Bach at this point, and what eight notes out of it are needed to get this puzzle solved? Right. <laughs> but it, to me, it just makes zero sense on why they wouldn't turn it free to play. I mean, $5? Like, why would you, why wouldn't you just try and get people in your game to feel incentivized to buy the additional content, maybe buy that sub for better bonuses and whatnot, and, you know, more features? why wouldn't you want to do that from a business standpoint? It just makes zero sense to me. I mean, well, the it, it, more players was, equals possible more money. Their, so. their perspective on it was simply that they wanted a barrier on purpose to get a specific type of player in there. So it's an elitism thing. Well, it definitely works. I mean, it, it definitely works. I, but it also leads to the potential downside of According to Steam, you have 330 people playing at any given moment. And Funcom was at Dire Straits as a business, so does it Yeah, really and that, that article pained me to write because of how much I loved the secret world. <laughs> 
saying that maybe this is a company that just based on their last 10 years or so, and here's a number of things that they've gone through, that maybe they should not be saved. And that pained me to write, because I, I love the secret world and would be very sad if it went away. Um, but yeah, I mean, mini Lego mini figurines, free to play, and then all of a sudden, oh, by the way, we're done with beta and we're going to be buy to play. It's just a, a team that historically makes some silly decisions time after time again that's hard to get behind with a lot of support besides, hey, I, well, I do like that one game that you guys have, uh, and so I'll support that one a little bit. Uh, it's, it, we talk a lot about Tryon Worlds making dumb decisions, and, and to be honest, Funcom has made some pretty dumb ones too. Uh, they just didn't hit us financially. I, I should say I probably that's why we don't look at them as a what what the fuck are they doing type company, because they haven't been cash shop related <laughs> like Arc Age and everything else with Try On Worlds. Um, I don't know. I I would love to see Secret World go free to play just from a player base standpoint, but as a player that buys the collector issues and does pay the sub. It, I don't want to see it go free to play because then I got all the free to play bots on my territory and I don't like it. So I don't know. Let us know what you think in the comments below about Funcom as a whole and particularly the secret world if you're a player. Before we get started with the uh, weekly bombs, let's touch on two reviews real quick. Jason Winter did a first look for Fractured Space, the 5 on 5. I think it's 5 on 5, isn't it? Yeah, it's, a, it's like a MOBA space shooter. Think Dreadnought in the form of a MOBA, where Dreadnought is more of that team versus team combat. Take that same big space space capital ships type gameplay and extrapolate it onto a MOBA where you're covering alpha, beta, and gamma points and ultimately trying to take out a base. And you've got the idea. Check out the first look on uh, MMOBomb.com for that one. I'm going to put it out there real quick, real simple. I was not a fan. I really wasn't uh, too big a fan of Dreadnought. And so taking Dreadnought style gameplay and putting it into a MOBA, which is also something that I'm not generally a fan of, except except in some rare circumstances. Uh, this totally missed the mark for me. I'm not going to give it a score because it would be totally unfair and totally biased on you just mixed two things that I really don't enjoy into something I really, really don't enjoy. So I'm just going to say this one was not for me at all. What about you, Q? Mm, uh, I mean, you know, I like spaceships, but again, it's it's a you know MOBA esque, so it kind of falls into the I'll watch somebody else play it rather than play it kind of area anyway. So basically, the same boat, Zach. You're the last one that can save this one on today's show. I I have not tried it. I also, despite the fact I, Jason gave me a key for a Dreadnought, still haven't got around to that either. I've just been busy playing other games that I know I would enjoy instead of trying out games that I might enjoy. And so that's one of the reasons why I've sort of been barred from playing that game. I already have enough on my plate as is, and I would rather just keep sort of munching away at said plate. Uh-oh, so. we have Q's little kitty picture up now. All right, let's go to the... Oh. Now she's back. Let's go to the next review, which I did a first look for this week as well. Hero Wars by uh, Cog Games. You know them from L Sword. Uh, very two and a half D isometric dungeon crawler game. Uh, love the voiceovers still being in their original languages with subtitles. I kind of dig the art style, the talking heads cutscenes mixed with full uh, full video uh, cutscenes. Uh, the gameplay obviously going to get very repetitive in that type of game. It's a dungeon crawler. You go and beat the same levels up in varying difficulties to try and get loots. Creative mounts, nice animations, played really well for a closed beta. I was more impressed with Hero Wars than I thought I was going to be going into it. It's not a stellar title by any stretch of the imagination, but for those of you that like like a dungeon fighter online, um, you're okay with not being able to create a character because like Elsword, you're picking from story-driven characters uh, from the onset, so you're picking from custom-built characters already that have their own lore and backstory. Um, this one, I can see myself jumping into occasionally, kind of like I like do with a Torchlight or a Diablo. Uh, I'm going to put it at about the 7 mark, uh, the 6.5, 7 mark. Just an average title for me. Uh, but if you were a fan of DFO, then uh, this might score a little bit higher for you. What about you, Zach? 
Uh, I thought it looked interesting. Uh, you had a lot of fun with it from the first look, and I think that it's definitely a game that I would go back and check out at a later point in time when I'm looking for something to sort of be a filler. Uh, and then if it actually grabs me and keeps me in and I still play it over time, that's great too. Uh, it certainly looks entertaining though. I, I liked its sort of perspective. Um, it kind of reminded me of like a dungeon fighter um, in Free to Play Weekly. For some reason, I brought up Vindictus and Dragon Nest is because of like the dungeon crawly aspect of it um, and sort of that perspective. But it, it's definitely a game that I would check out. And it's definitely a game that I probably will check out in the future. So Q? Uh, I mean, I have to agree with your like your initial assessment. It doesn't look very impressive on the surface. It just kind of looks like, I don't know, you know, obviously just another anime style game. But yeah, I think maybe as something to just kind of tool around with or something at some point, I, it's not something I would see myself playing a whole, whole lot. Let's slide um, over and do the weekly bombs. All right. Q, you're up first. Oh, well, I'm just going to go ahead and, and, you know, give an A-bomb to my glorious country internet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that saves me from having to do it. <laughs> go ahead, Zach. Uh, I'm going to give an A-bomb to my internet provider as well, Comcast, because my internet has been out in the past week and a half two times. Now, luckily, the first time was the longest time. The second time was only like five minutes. But the fact that I've seemed to have had to call my Comcast uh, like customer support at least like twice in the past two weeks is ridiculous. Um, luckily though, um, and I'm going to give them a dub bomb to this, at least they're almost about paying my bill because of this. Because <laughs> now when I call up, it's not just a day credit. Um, now I request a $25 credit. And if they don't give it to me, I do not get off the line. So... I'm just going to keep just dealing with the outages and get $25 credits, I guess. But I really wish I could just have consistent internet. That'd be great. <laughs> uh, I'm happy with my internet service. Watch it go down tonight now because of that. Uh, dub bomb for me to Adventure Quest 3D. And this is kind of an odd one for me to give because uh, the game is just generally more casual than I'm, I'm really going to get into. I'm not uh, the cross-platform play while intriguing as far as the way they're doing it. Uh, between PC, iOS, and Android. Uh, it's just generally not my kind of thing. But I did a preview this last week. Again, check out the article on MMOBomb.com. And uh, one, I think fans of the franchise Adventure Quest are going to love it. A and the cross-platform play, the real quick plug-and-play style with your friends is is really going to cater to that audience. I think they're really going to like it. And... <clears throat> Check out the, the preview itself for something different. The, the team at Artex there, uh, including uh, Artex himself, all the way down, uh, it was really a pleasant preview to do. Uh, that's a really, really, really passionate team uh, about what they do uh, to the point of willing to take losses on certain things just to keep them running. Uh, it's, it's refreshing. Uh, to sit down and do a preview with a team that, that, that is that passionate. So huge to bomb to Adventure Quest 3D and to uh, the team at Arctic Entertainment. Is it Arctic Entertainment? I hope I got that right. Arctic. Uh, 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 uh. Yes, Entertainment. All right. Made, made sure my descriptor was right. I didn't want to misquote. Uh, from the viewers, Deathlock says, I would love to give a massive A-bomb to DayZ. That game is trash. <laughs> and I've lost pictures of everybody now. <laughs> <laughs> you guys just keep disappearing on me, and I don't know what to do. Uh, I would like to give a massive A-bomb to DayZ. That game is trash. Every time I try to play it, I can't because the damn mouse doesn't work. And no, it's not my PC. It's the DayZ trash. Now that is a game that needs to die. I would love to dub, uh, dub bomb to Zach's camera. Finally, your voice and lips are in sync with each other, and it doesn't feel like I'm watching a 70s kung fu movie. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Zach. You're up next. Uh, Lek Yi says, I don't know why people think free-to-play of Wildstar is bad. Last time I checked the cash shop, it was not pay-to-win. You can do all the content without spending a penny, and you can buy stuff from the shop with in-game currency. Maybe the problem with Wildstar is having a very good free-to-play model. People don't feel that they need to spend the money, so they don't. 
Let's hope NCSoft sells the IP to someone. Uh, it wasn't the cash shop that was the problem there. Yeah. And now you guys are back, but now you're like really dark. What is <laughs> going <laughs> on today with Skype? <laughs> Go ahead, know. Q. Uh, Sky Shadow, a bomb to Bastion from Overwatch. Love the hero, but he is broken. I did a 30 kill streak by just sitting on the objective, and I'm not going to start to explain why it's impossible to win against six of them. Really now? <laughs> yeah, Bastion is is crazy. Zach shaking his head. Yes, because a lot of people think this, and they've been saying it from beta. And all the pros, if they was overpowered, they'd use him constantly. And the reason that they don't is because he's easy to counter. Now, maybe between open beta and launch, they did something to make him even more powerful. I don't know. But I just find that every single time I see a Bastion, I'm able to kill him easily. Just roll a Winston, get a Tracer, get a Reaper, anything that could teleport or move really fast, and you're pretty much good to go. So, I don't know. Uh, Doggy V 72 I like that name. Uh, said, what happened to Zach's feedback on Black Desert's update? Yeah, on last week's show, you had mentioned that you were going to talk about the Black Desert update. Then you A-bombed it because of the enchantment plus five. Uh, what's your feedback now that you've you've had a chance to look at it? It was the enchantment plus 20 um, being added to the game. Right, 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 from 15 to, to 20. Yes, it's still not released yet, um, and I'm happy that's not. Uh, and I'm happy that they actually... In order to get people caught up, they did an event where black stones are extremely easy to get. You can go in the level 5 area, kill some imps, and you can get black stones that way too. So they've definitely allowed you to catch up. I wish they just keep that the way it is. That way people who initially start playing the game don't feel like they have to play 480 hours, as one of my commenters on a video said, in order to get a starter set, which is completely absurd. And the fact people think that's okay is even more absurd. Um, but luckily, they did that event to correct that issue, um, and I'm happy Valencia's coming out for the content. I still don't wish that they'd have the, the plus 20 um, enhancement. I, I don't think that's necessary. I don't think that's okay. It's just going to create an even higher power disparity between the population and the hardcores from the people who maybe have to go outside to go to work and whatnot and can't spend all day playing the game. So, Go ahead and take the next one. Zach? Oh, me. Okay, I thought you were talking about Q. Um, rent the Rose. The rent the Rose. For, rent rent the, rose. the Rose. My bad, my bad. The Bomb for weekly updates. Um, a Bomb for no one commenting anymore. Hashtag lonely comment section. Uh, Ren, you got there way too early. There were a bunch of comments after yours. Clearly, <laughs> since I'm using them in the show notes. <laughs> and weekly updates. Is she referring to free-to-play weekly, Zach? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe she likes Zach on the free to play weekly. Uh, I had a really long one here from Killbone, but we are running way over time today, so we're gonna we're gonna skip this one. Killbone, I did have your whole NCSoft is not a bad company, but they've made some bad choices. Uh, uh, article basically that you posted on YouTube, and I very much appreciate it. But unfortunately, we're running a bit long, so we got to kind of skip ahead here. Uh, question of the week last week: What MMO slash MOBA slash whatever free to play title do you want a console version of, and why? And if you happen to be in the MMOs don't belong on consoles camp, tell us why. Forteg says, I would definitely say there are two games I would love to see console versions of, Blade and Soul and Wildstar. You know, if it doesn't disappear immediately on us. I believe their combat systems go perfectly well with the consoles. Perhaps NCSoft can even start moving the industry forward by trying out cross-compatibility features. Hint, freaking hint. Well, now that, now that Microsoft is kind of softening on that stance a little bit i'm hopeful that we will see some things in the future i remember being able to play final fantasy 11 on my ps2 my computer or my xbox 360 on the same characters so hopefully we can get back to that stuff it's not like we never did it before go ahead zach uh deathlock says question of the week even though it's not exactly free to play i would love to see black desert online come to the consoles the combat is awesome and it fits well with the controller the UI is very clean and would make it really easy to navigate. And the game just looks beautiful. I wonder if console release of Wildstar would have been better than a Steam release. Probably not. Um, Deathlock, the reason why there probably won't be a Black Desert console, um, basically announcement or just sort of port, 
is the hard drives. Um, I literally switched from my mechanical hard drive to my SSD. The game runs way better. There's less pop in. And since there's a mechanical hard drive on all the consoles right now, unless you mod it, you would probably have a lot of freezing going on, as I experienced. So I, I, I agree with you, though. It, it definitely fits. Definitely fits. Go ahead, Q. All right, Rin the Rose. I think Cross Out would be awesome on console. I love the whole car combat feel ever since I played Twisted Metal when I was five. I think MMORPGs and the like are awesome experience no matter the platform. I mean, if mobile can do it, why not Xbox One or PS5.5 or whatever the new PS upgrade will be? That, uh, I agree. That is a game that would lend itself very well to consoles. Uh, Tikal or Tykel? Uh, 2399. I'd love to see Guild Wars 2 on consoles. I saw what Final Fantasy 14 was going to be, and I knew I was going to buy it, but I wanted to get some practice with MMOs as a whole beforehand since I'd never played one. Bought Guild Wars 2, saw the potential, but it having no controller support made me uninstall. If it ever comes to console, I will suddenly be sick from work for a few days, I'm sure. <laughs> P.S. To those who say MMOs don't belong on consoles, I say F them with no grease. Well, that's a bit rough. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a bit harsh. Go, go ahead, Zach. Kinetic Fetus says, I wouldn't mind being able to sit back and play PoE on my TV with the ease of just turning on my PS4. Path of Exile would be a definite nice one on consoles. Go ahead, Q. Uh, Sky Shadow, for me, it's between Dota 2 and Guild Wars 2, both games I love and play daily. Dota 2 would be interesting to try out on console, but Guild Wars 2, I believe, can actually have a player base on consoles. The game is hands down awesome, in my opinion. It just needs new controls and some marketing for the consoles. Lots and lots of Guild Wars 2 console love in the comments, and I just grabbed a few of them, not even all of them. Here's another one. Random Gamer, I'd love to see Guild Wars 2 on consoles, and... Blade and Soul. Both games have the power to smash some console controllers. I could definitely see that. I'd, I'd break a controller or two over Blade and Soul <laughs> and RNG. Go, go ahead, Zach. Uh, Glorious Most says, I'd love to see Dungeon Fighter Online on the console. I already play it with a controller, and I feel it are, its arcade looks and feel mesh well with a console, so I assume it would do very well, or really well, rather. Yeah. Question of the week, <laughs> meh, question of the week for next weekend. Should I be looking forward to Riders of Icarus, even though it's a bit traditional on some front as much as I am, or am I just crazy and overly optimistic? What's your outlook on Riders of Icarus? Put it in the comments below. Don't forget your dub bombs uh, for something good, A bombs for something bad. A little light on it last week, so fill it up with some dub bombs for me next week. Until then, Q, where can everybody find you besides Robot Skype? <laughs> Where else but Robot Skype? Um, Twitter at Quintlin and uh, writing stuff sometimes on Game Skidding. Mr. Zach Sharps. Um, I'm going to keep it simple. Twitter at Zach Sharps. Just stalk me on there. And I can tweet back to you if you have a question. So. I'm Mike Byrne, a.k.a. Magic Man. You can follow me on Twitter right there, Magic Man 1, M-A-G-I-C-K-M-A-N-N-1. -N -N of course, come on over to MMOBomb.com. Check out the first looks, previews, articles. Basically, everything we talked about today has even more information in previews and videos on the site. Check it out and make sure you stop by and sign up for a giveaway. Until next time, stay safe. See you on the servers.